this uh, special meeting, December 1st, special meeting of the Redford Bay Recreation District Board of Trustees. Our purpose here this morning is to conduct an interview for uh, one of the several interviews we have for general counsel. Um, to begin, uh, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Mr. Grimmel, would you please do the roll? Mr. Nugent. Here. Mr. Grimmel, present. Mr. Morrissey. Here. Mr. Amos. Present. Uh, Chairman Lyon. Present. Also note that we have with us Mr. Coffey, our district manager, Stephanie Brown, our district clerk, and I'll get it wrong again, Michaela. Mackenzie. Mackenzie, <laughs> our assistant to the district clerk. Also note that we have trustee-elect HB out in the audience. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, sir. Uh, of course, the, as I said, the purpose of the meeting today is to conduct an interview one of several interviews we are conducting for the general counsel position. Um, today we have the Voss, did you say Voss? It's Voss. Voss, Voss firm with us. Uh, we have Mr. Carey, uh, we have Bet Becky Voss, Voss, and Wade Voss, correct? That's right. And of course they'll introduce themselves and say a little more to do to say later. Um, before we begin, let me explain that we have a, um, uh, this interview would take approximately about an hour. Okay, it might even be less. Um, we have a select questions that we have assigned to each trustee that we'll ask. Our, our purpose, of course, is to see, not, not necessarily to judge your legal qualifications, but more or less to see if your firm or your general counsel would fit in with the Fairfield Bay Recreation District. Um, that's what's most important to us. Um, the questions, as I said, will go from one trustee to another. At some point, you'll realize that some of the questions are kind of the same theme, et cetera, et cetera. But again, we're trying to see how our general counsel would react when those questions are asked or answer those questions. So please bear with us. Um, uh, what do we, what I said we, I, I, we are hoping to um, make a decision on our general counsel sometime yet this month and we hope to have them on board for sure for the new year. So um, we're kind of pressed for time, but we will see what we can do. To, um, I don't think I, to begin, uh, I will start the questioning. And um, again, my first question is very general. Please provide a, and I'm not sure who will be answering or all three of you will answer. It's, it's up to you how you'd like to do this. Um, I would like to provide a summary of your legal experience that would enhance your role as our general counsel. More specifically, tell us about your experience working with local municipalities, special districts, governmental units, those kinds of things. And again, as I said, some of these questions may get to be repetitive after a while, but bear with us. Thank you, Mr. Car uh, Mr. Chair. My name is John Carey. Um, I, I'd first like to begin with my experience. Um, what first brought me to Brevard is my wife is a Brevard native. Um, she grew up in Rockledge, went to Rockledge High School, um, and then I joined the U.S. Air Force as an officer um, in space and missile operations, and most of my five-year career was spent at Cape Canaveral. Um, so I spent about five years at the Cape doing uh, rocket launches, and then uh, went to law school, and my first job out of law school was as an assistant uh, city attorney with the city of Ocala. Um, and, um, since then, I've done various uh, jobs and positions uh, that I think have enhanced my experience. Um, primarily, uh, I've worked in all three branches of the state government for the State House of Representatives, um, for the executive branch as an agency uh, supervising attorney, and as a supervising attorney in the judicial branch um, at the Florida Supreme Court. And uh, you know, that experience, uh, I think, really brought to life uh, you know, how the state interacts with local governments and special districts and um, you know, the importance of understanding how state government operates for something like this. Um, and since then, I've, I've been assistant city attorney for the city of St. Augustine, and now I'm currently uh, city attorney for um, two different cities, uh, which is the city of Bunnell and the city of Brooksville. I I'd love to add a Brevard a special district to uh, my portfolio for one, it's very close for me to get here, uh, as opposed to Bunnell and Brooksville. 
Um, I'm right down the road. I can be here in a, under a half hour. I live in South Brevard, work every day out of South Brevard. Um, and so this is home to me. Uh, not barefoot based specifically, obviously, but this region. Um, and uh, so municipal law is really all I do at this point. I, I have the experience with the state, um, which has served me well. Uh, for my broad-based knowledge and experience, but uh, right now, uh, municipal law and special districts is um, not just my primary focus, it's my sole focus. And this is the sole focus of our firm. A and I think, you know, you all should probably understand that because our firm is different. We're different than the other firms that have applied because um, this is special district and municipal law is all we do. We don't have corporate clients, we don't have personal injury clients, um, so this is what we do you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, you know, however much it takes to get the job done. Um, and then to, to my right and left, I'd like to, Becky and Wade to introduce themselves as well. Uh, I'll just say, uh, Becky's been doing municipal law since before I was born. Sorry if that ages you. <laughs> but, um, you know, tons of experience at this table. Um, uh, she's also the city attorney for the city of Cocoa Beach up the road. And uh, Wade has also been doing municipal law his whole career and he's the special magistrate for Satellite Beach. So we do have a significant pr presence right here in Brevard. Okay, as John said, um, our firm does local government law. It's not an afterthought for us. It's not, oh, just something we'll get to if, if our other clients are not keeping us terribly busy. It's what we do. We love it, and we love the, um, the interaction with people who care enough about where they live to actually volunteer their time. And that's what y'all are doing. Um, so we work with governments all over the state. Um, our firm is city attorney for nine different cities, county attorney for one county. Um, it ranges from as small as the town of Oakland um, which actually is kind of in my backyard, I live in Central Florida, um, to as large as the city of Naples. Um, and we are scattered all over the state. Um, I've been practicing local government law for 48 years. Um, and that's basically what I have done, what I love to do. Um, Wade grew up going to local government meetings with me in the evenings, he'd sit in the back and do his homework. So he kind of grew up with it, but he's, he's done it for a long time. Both Wade and John are certified in local government um, by the Florida Bar. Um, I am not, I never bothered to go through that process because I've actually taught a lot of courses for the certification. And frankly, after 48 years, you feel like going through that. But um, we're very, very qualified. Um, I've also represented two special, independent special districts, the um, Green Swamp Land Authority, um, which basically um, handled a lot of property, basically over um, three counties. We were very, very active in getting land protection agreements um, for that. But the um, special districts, independent special districts is nothing new to us. Um, I also represented the North Lake County Hospital Board of Trustees, which was a group of people like you who were interested in serving their communities. Um, we, uh, well actually I'd like for Wade to tell you about our practice some more. Trustees, good morning. Uh, my name is Wade Bose, as uh, Becky mentioned. I'm a partner with the Bose Law Firm as well. Uh, both John and Becky uh, mentioned most of the things I would otherwise say. Uh, as they mentioned, we're city attorney for nine cities, county attorney for one county. Um, I actually do a fair bit of my work a little bit towards this direction, a little bit further south, actually. I'm the county attorney for Okeechobee County, and I'm also the uh, village attorney for the village of Indian Town in Martin County. Uh, little ways south of here. So, um, as they both mentioned, we have an incredible amount of experience representing local governments in diverse situations. And uh, what I found most interesting 
about you all as a recreation district is the unique uh, opportunities and the unique challenges you all have. One particular thing I wanted to mention that may be uh, relevant to what you all have to deal with, we understand that uh, one of the things you are charged with is enforcing the deed of restrictions that, uh, that is in place here. Our firm has represented Orange County on code enforcement matters since 1991. This is very, um, uh, I think very analogous to the, the type of work you have to do with regard to that. We have been the county's firm that they have used, particularly when they go to court, uh, not just going through the code enforcement <coughs> process, but going to court with regard to enforce, enforcing code enforcement liens and also seeking injunctive relief for the county. Um, and as I mentioned, we've been doing that, I guess, 30 years now, 1991. Sure. So um, we would love the opportunity to represent you folks, and uh, I believe we would, and John in particular, we would do a fantastic job for you. Thank you. Um, okay, you answered all our questions. The interview is over. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Um, I want to remind the board that, you know, if you do have a question, be feel free to follow up and you know ask additional question after you ask your question. And to begin with, I have one. How many attorneys do you have in your firm? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. We've got. Now I got ten of them. Yeah. Now I know. Come on. Yeah. Seven. Seven. There you seven attorneys. Okay. Yeah. Are all your attorneys then in your firm involved in in municipal government kind of oh, things? Yes. All, all of them, right? Yes. Okay. It is. It is, as John mentioned, it is our only area of practice. Okay, that's why I just want to make sure the other attorneys were part of that too. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. Yes. Mr. Nugent. Sorry if the question seems redundant and it's already yes. been answered. Have you had experience working with permitting, code enforcement issues, or working with the courts to place liens on property? Yeah, as a local government attorneys exclusively, that's obviously one of the, the big areas of our practice. Um, we have every one of our uh, clients has code enforcement uh, of some sort, mostly under uh, state statute, Chapter 162. Yours is obviously a little different than that, but as Wade said, um, we do frequently have to go to court for injunctive relief, which is what you essentially do for your deed of restriction enforcement. And, and so uh, that is a significant area of our practice. Um, I personally represent the code enforcement boards um, for uh, Brooksville and Bunnell um, on a regular basis, and we do that with all of our clients as well. And also, you mentioned permitting. Um, permitting is a part of every one of our governmental clients' repertoire. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Bruno. Please tell us why you want to take one our district as a client, and what makes the general counsel position a good fit for you. Uh, thank you. As we've noted, as I've noted, um, we do local government exclusively, um, and, and Barefoot Bay is in my backyard. So I, I've been, uh, you know, hoping to be able to find a local client that's more local than uh, the other ones I represent. Um, and so, you know, it, it would be an honor for me to be able to represent uh, such an important community in, in South Brevard, where I live and, and where I spend time. You know, my son plays. Uh, football up in uh, West Melbourne, and um, he had a game a few weeks ago in uh, Sebastian. So we drove right past here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm down here uh, several times a year for uh, you know various reasons, whether it's to go to the inlet or to um, you know to uh, do something else in South Brevard, and, and uh, you know, so it's an honor for me personally uh, to have a local client uh, that I could call my own. Uh, second. This is a unique opportunity because most of our other clients um, are municipalities, and, and this is an area for uh, me personally to be able to branch out into a special district. Um, and you know, as Becky said, we do have a significant experience representing special districts. Um, and, and to my right, there's 40 plus years of experience um, in that area uh, for me to lean on. You'll be working uh, probably nearly exclusively with me. Um, but I have the benefit of having you know, such experienced attorneys in my firm uh, that, that I can uh, talk to and bounce ideas off of. And um, 
so you know, just the opportunity to be able to represent uh, something so close to where I live and to represent, uh, you know, at, like Becky said, you all volunteer your time. You know, these aren't jobs where you're making, uh, you know, thousands of dollars a month to do. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's really, uh, we enjoy being able to uh, interact with people in our communities who, um, you know, have the public service mindset, uh, because we do as well. You know, that's kind of why we get into this area of law. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Morsi. Okay. The general counsel is hired by and reports to the board of trustees. However, the general counsel will spend most of his or her time working with the community manager and department manager. How will you work successfully with each of these groups, and how do you see your role and relationship of each group? Yeah, that's a great question, because in that way, this really is analogous to a city, because for our city clients, of course, our city council uh, people can call us at any time, morning and night. Um, but most of the work we do with the cities, we're working with the city manager, county administrator, you know, whoever the point person is that's appointed by the board, uh, because they're the ones that are working day to day to get things done. And, and so, as general counsel, uh, we work hand in hand with our, um, uh, you know, with our uh, city um, city managers, and in this case, uh, you know, board administrator. Um, and we're in probably nearly daily contact with the city managers and department heads. Uh, for our cities, and I would expect the same here. You know, I, I'd expect to be um, in contact with John probably nearly every day uh, on some matters, or if he has staff, uh, you know, that I will speak directly with. And, and you know, one of the other things I, I guess I'd like to point out about our firm is we have the advantage of if if you all call or if John calls, there's no additional billing for those calls. So you know, he can feel free to call us if he has any concerns about the the path he's traveling down to make sure we don't get into some legal trouble down the road where he feels like, well, I didn't want to call the attorney on this because, you know, that, that'd be $100 every, you know, half hour for the call or whatever. Uh, you know, that's simply not a concern because of our unique billing arrangement. And I think we're the only firm in the state that has this billing arrangement. So that, you know, all of your calls to us um, to head off any potential legal problems, um, you know, are completely covered in the bills. Uh, and, and that's true with the litigation as well for the deeds of restriction. We don't charge extra an extra hourly fee for uh, litigation like some other firms do. And that's particularly important with you because, you know, with a lot of our code enforcement clients, code enforcement is before a board, and you only get into litigation if that's appealed to the court. Whereas you're going directly to the courts, um, so uh, you know, that, that's something that's completely covered within our fee, and it doesn't cost any extra for you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to point out that as with our cities and our county, we work for the board and we work with the staff and we typically love the staff we work with and we love the boards that we work with, but we know who we work for and that's the board. Thank you. Mr. Amos. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, board members are divided over how to handle a legal issue. How would you react if certain members of the board disagreed or opposed a legal opinion or a recommendation that you gave the board? Well, legal opinion and a recommendation is just that. It's our um, guidance on you as to how to best proceed. Um, but as the board of trustees for this organization, it's ultimately your decision how to move forward. Um, we can offer you our best advice and we can offer you our best opinions and, and stand by those. Um, but if the board wants to go a different direction um, for whatever reason, then we will shift gears and immediately um, you know, look for the best way, best legal solutions to the problem in the way that the board wants to move forward. Uh, as the attorney, we're not a sixth board member. Um, we are under your direction. And so, um, you know, it, it, whatever it is that you want to do, uh, we try to come up with solutions. So, uh, you know, our, our legal recommendation, legal opinion is just that. And, you know, if we have a reason we'd want you to follow it, 
um, we'd obviously be, uh, I'd feel free to tell you and, and tell you the reasons why and explain them so that you understand where we're coming from. But ultimately, you're all the ones that have to vote on the, the path forward for any given issue. And the majority of the council's will is what we follow. Thank you. And again, some of these are, as Jim said, redundant. But again, because we're trying to get the kinds of answers that get into some of this stuff so we understand how you relate to boards, etc. Same type scenario. At a board of trustee meeting, the board members are divided over how to handle an issue. If the board members are not willing to compromise, which we never do, we compromise always, uh, do you feel it's part of your responsibility to act or make a recommendation? Now, we're not talking necessarily about illegally, but to make a recommendation to move the issue forward during a meeting. That's a little trickier because, you know, that's a question that's a very broad and, you know, it's hard to know what a specific example along those lines would be. Um, but I can tell you, we're I not... Guess, I, guess to, and, and it, I guess the point of it is, is there are such things as legal opinions right. and things like recommendations. We're trying to figure out, you know, where do you think you sit as far as recommendations to the yeah. So, we don't direct or... or really get involved in policy decisions. That's best left to the board of trustees um, along with your, uh, your professional staff. And um, you know, our, our role is to make sure that once you make those policy decisions that we can help you provide, provide you the best legal path forward for doing so. So um, you know, to the extent that we, I, I would have a recommendation would be if, if it sounds like you're going down a path that you know, wouldn't be legally allowable, and I may have to chime in and say, you know, there's a better way to go about this that's legal. Um, but, but as far as you know, making decisions on policy, you know, that's the board's purview, and uh, along with the recommendation from your professional staff. And we try to respect and um, recognize the role that your professional staff has, and hopefully, you know, that's uh, that goes both ways because. Um, you know, we, we try to stay in our lane and make sure that we're providing the best legal pro opinion possible um, and, and allow you to d decide what the policy should be. Thank you. Mr. Luigi. Based on the above questions and our answers to those questions, where do you see your role as a member of the BBRD overall team? Um, as professional counsel, we are, I think, an integral member of all of the organizations that we're involved in. Um, you know, we, I'd be present at every board meeting, and again, there wouldn't be any, any hourly fees for that. It's just part of the service we provide you. And so that, you know, and I do think that's important because I think it's important to make sure that when you decide on um, issues that if there's any legal problems, we can identify them from the beginning. So that, that's better for your organization, it's better for us, it's better for your staff um, to be able to do that. And so, you know, as a member of your team, uh, we're just that. We work for you. And, and so we want to make sure that we're providing you the, the best legal advice possible um, to support the decisions that you make and to support the administration's carrying out those decisions. Thank you. Mr. Bruno. Often matters arise outside of normal business hours. What would be your ability to the board, uh, your availability to the board trustees and community manager? And what would you consider to be an adequate response time? So we answer the phone 24 hours a day. If you call at three in the morning because you wake up in a cold sweat realizing that you know you figured out some problem, you know, as long as my phone wakes me up, I'll answer. I, I can promise you that. Occasionally, obviously, the phone has to go to voicemail if we're in a meeting like this one or in a court hearing or on the phone with another client, you know, but then we immediately return the calls. There's no, you know, well, we'll call you back in a couple days. You know, for, for us, um, it, it's been a policy of the firm to respond to calls and emails as quickly as possible. And, and that all, should always mean the same day. Um, obviously, if you email at 11 o'clock at night, I may not get to it the next morning. But if you call, you know, I'll answer it. Um, any time that I hear the phone ring when I'm available to answer. And, and the same goes for Becky and Wade too. You know, I, you'll primarily probably be dealing with me, but if you want to call one of them for whatever reason, um, they'll take your calls as well. And, and our responsiveness, I think, is one of the things that sets us apart. Uh, and, and if you talk to any of our other clients, I think they could probably tell you that. 
And I would like to mention that he's not getting about three o'clock in the morning because our other cities do have police departments mm -hmm. and it is not unusual to get a call in the middle of the night because they need an answer right then. And we give it to them. We don't turn off our phones at night or in the afternoon or the early morning. We just don't, we just don't do it. And one of my roles with Cocoa Beach is the advisor of the police department. So I do their police litigation. And, uh, you know, she's absolutely right. If they have an issue because they're about to pound somebody's door down and want to make sure it's legal, you know, they may need to call in the middle of the night. And we'll absolutely take those calls. And, and we do the same for you. Uh, typically, we find that the council people and the city staff tend to call during the day. But if, if they call after hours, we'll always take the call. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Morrissey, I believe, right? Yeah, if you don't ask for a legal opinion regarding an issue from a public meeting, how would you respond and in what situations would you consider it appropriate to provide a written legal opinion? Yeah, that's a great question because sometimes um, you get hit with questions out of the blue at a meeting that wasn't on the agenda and, and you frankly um, need to research it further in order to provide the best legal opinion. Uh, I try not to give off-the-cuff opinions um, especially, you know, without um, letting you know that it's off the cuff, but I'd further research and get back with you. Because um, there are some tricky legal issues that if you don't have advance notice of, it would frankly be irresponsible to give you a, an answer, you know, right at the meeting. Um, and that's why I always recommend to my uh, board members, if you have something that you know you're going to bring up that's a legal issue, um, you know, give us a heads up a couple days before so that we can look into it and give you a firm and solid answer uh, the day of the meeting. Um, but if there's a situation where there's something that comes up at the meeting that nobody was really prepared for, um, I, I would, you know, answer the best that I can. If I don't know the answer, I would be very frank. You will sometimes hear from me, I don't know the answer to that. I'd like to research it and get back with you. And, and frankly, you should hear that from any competent attorney because no attorney knows everything there is to know about the law. You know, you've seen the Florida statute books, they're this thick. You know, nobody has it all memorized. And, and you know, we have a vast knowledge in the area of municipal and special district law, but we don't know everything right off the top of our head. And, and so I'll be very frank with you and say, you know, can you allow me an opportunity to research that and get back with you? And then whether it's appropriate for, you know, just telling you like on the phone, here's what the answer is, or providing a, a written legal opinion depends on a circumstance. But if there's some board action that you want to take, um, you know, that may be legally uh, thorny, um, you know, it may be best to provide a written opinion um, so that you all have everything, uh, you know, all the issues laid out in front of you that you can look at and read. Other things, it's pretty simple. We can just provide you a verbal answer. And, you know, if you want further uh, written answer, you know, we'd be happy to provide it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Amos. Based on your number. Did, did, our, did our mic somehow go down? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was wondering. You're on. Okay. Based on your knowledge of Fairfoot Bay and your preparations for this interview, what are the most important legal challenges facing the Fairfoot Bay Recreation District? Um, well, obviously, uh, the first and foremost, I think, is what to do about the grass on the golf course. Um, <laughs> you definitely don't want to mess that up. Uh, but in all seriousness, you know, obviously, you're involved in litigation um, for the deeds and restrictions, and. and with the DORs, you know, you're dealing with um, the property of residents and uh, making sure that they're compliant for the good of the community. Uh, and so there's property, private property rights intertwined with, um, you know, the community deed restrictions that you all agreed to when you moved here. And so that's obviously a key area because, um, you know, it involves direct um, litigation against the residents of your community, which can be touchy. Uh, and we certainly recognize that, but we also, uh, you know, need to make sure that for the good of the entire community, everybody follows the uh, deeds of restrictions. So, you know, I, I think that's probably uh, first and foremost the uh, issue that, uh, the, the biggest legal issues that we'd want to uh, help you work out. 
Okay. Mr. Amos, you had a question at the other interview. Do you still want to ask that one? Or maybe even, you asked at another interview. I don't remember exactly what it was. Is that pertinent to him? Our last interviews? Mm -hmm. You asked the candidates? Oh, I thought you did. Okay, do you have a, do you, do you, have, you had showed me another thing you wanted to ask them? Question you asked the oh, my question. Okay, yeah, I right. okay. Um, We're a deed restricted community. A significant part of general counsel's work is with deed of restrictions. What strategies might you employ to reduce our uh, litigation in court time? Well, the first thing I want to answer that, because I, I think that question may be more relevant for the, um, the firms that are charging an hourly fee in court. For us, that's included. So any additional court time that you have isn't a cost that you all would have to pay. That's, that's on us to deal with. So we have um, incentive to, which is aligned with your incentive, I think, uh, to reduce that. Because, you know, that, that's extra time that we take that we don't get paid for. Um, like the other firms that you're dealing with. Um, and obviously, the number one goal with uh, deed of restrictions compliance, as with code compliance, is compliance itself. You know, we want to make sure the property gets into compliance so that, um, so that all of the residents are actually following the deed of uh, restrictions. Um, because that is a covenant that you agree to when you move here. And if, if you don't want to live under um, a DOR, frankly, this is probably the wrong community for you. And so, you know, we want to help staff to achieve compliance without litigation. But if we need to go to litigation, um, we certainly will, and we will do so at our expense. Thank you. Um, I think I'm up next. Based, right, based on all of this, and and the answers that you've given, and you're talking, you you spoke uh, of all the other organizations you you represent. Factoring in the other professional commitments, based on your knowledge of our district. Um, I'll ask my question and then I'll add to it. How much time would you have to devote to Barefoot Bay issues? In other words, in terms of time needed for legal services, how would the Barefoot Bay Recreation District rate in comparison to some of your other clients and the amount of time that you would spend on those clients? Are we a large district? Are we a small client? Um, and, and I guess overall the question is with all the organizations you represent, do you have time for us? Yeah, that's a great question because you know, one of the things, and I'm not saying anything disparaging about any particular firm, but frankly, if you're a law firm and you've got clients that are paying you $400 an hour, corporate clients, and you've got a recreation district that you're giving a discount to and only charging $175 an hour, I would think if I were in those shoes, I would probably want to put at the top of the list the $400 an hour clients. And we don't have that issue because all of our clients, you know, the work that we have to do um, is covered under the cost of our contract with you. So there's no incentive on our part to put you below any other clients that we have. Uh, one of the things we try to do, and we do do very successfully, is turn over the work quickly. So you're not going to have to wait you know, weeks or months for a contract. If, if, you, if we've been directed um, by either staff or the board to put together a contract or a lease, uh, or any other uh, you know legal instrument, um, we tend to turn those over very quickly. You know, usually within days. So, and that's for our own, you know, sanity and our own um, ability to keep up with the work. Because if we let things sit around, you know, every day brings new challenges. So um, we try to keep everything at the top of our inbox and then get it out. And that's just our firm's philosophy. Uh, and it's what we do every day for all of our clients, and, and you would fit in exactly with that model. So, um, you know, you wouldn't take a backseat to anybody. So, so and this, Mr. Amos, this is one of the things you asked me earlier before the meeting. So, the three of you are here. You said you have about seven attorneys in your family. Um We look at your proposal and we see all of the um, clients that you have and the, the municipalities, governmental agencies that you represent. Um, and we meet. For sure, twice a month. We meet on the second Friday and uh, was it the fourth Tuesday of every month. Um, uh, plus, we have other special meetings that we may or may not call for different things. I guess the question would be, does that all fit in with your schedule? And who would attend our meetings? 
I would likely attend all of your meetings. And that fits in perfectly with my schedule. Um, most local governments don't like having Friday meetings. So I don't have this any. Either, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have anything on my calendar most Friday as far as meetings go. Um, you know, I, I may occasionally have some calls and you know meetings with staff and those sorts of things. But I would obviously work those around your board schedule. Um, and, and as far as you know, any other nights of the week, um, you know, your your meetings would be you know top priority. Um, so I've worked with staff to make sure that if you have a special meeting that falls outside of the normal times, that um, it would be at a time when I'd be available. And um, if for whatever reason there was a conflict that I absolutely couldn't get out of, which occasionally happens in this business, uh, you know, the, the great thing about our firm is we've got six other attorneys who specialize in this kind of work. So I'm not sending in you know, somebody who's never dealt with a special district or local government before. Uh, Becky would probably be the primary backup if I, if I couldn't make a meeting. And, um, you know, you, you obviously know of the experience that she has. So, um, so. So the two of you would, would, would be familiar with both the big issues? Yes. Um, even though we are scattered all around any day of the week, um, we get together, typically remotely, by phone, and we talk about what's going on with our various clients so that if, you know, heaven forbid, Mack truck comes and wipes one of us out, that does not, isn't that a horrible thought? <laughs> but, um, you know, that will not affect our clients because we, uh, I have a very good idea of what's going on in all nine of our municipalities in Long County. Uh, Wade does too, John does too. Um, so that is not an issue. And I wanted to clear something up. Um, John mentioned that there was some thought, I think at the last meeting, that um, possibly if we had to spend an exorbitant amount of time with y'all that it would increase what we charge? That's not true at all. Um, it doesn't matter what y'all get yourselves involved in. That's, that's one thing that we're very careful about. We try to keep you out of trouble. But if for some reason there is a problem, you get sued, there's, you know, just it takes an enormous amount of time, that's okay. That it comes under our same, um, you know, agreement. Uh, our smallest client is the town of Oakland, and they just recently were sued. They were virtually never sued before um, in the past, but uh, they were recently sued. We have spent a great deal of time on that, and it has never occurred to me or anybody else in the firm to try to charge them anything extra. Because it's just, this is what we do. Thank you. Mr. Lincoln. I'm sorry, Mr. Lincoln. The effective communication is important if we're to succeed as a team. In your experience, what role have you played to facilitate communication? And what are some of the factors that can promote or deter open communication? Um, so one of the things that I think facilitates communications for our firm is that you know going in, that you can call at any time without incurring fees. And so you're free to call whenever if you just want to bounce thoughts off me or you know, ask about a specific issue. And um, you know, we have a completely open line of communication. Um, you obviously fall under sunshine, and, and so you, know, you can also email, but uh, obviously those are uh, public records if you do, um, which usually isn't an issue. But it's one of the things that um, you know, you're free to email whatever as well. And, We'll always get back with you very quickly uh, via email. And uh, you know, we have regular conversations with our board members. And, and frankly, that's kind of up to the board member how much communication you want. There are some of our city council people that have kind of made it clear that other than at the meetings, they don't really want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, uh, they have jobs, they have uh, you know, 50, 60 hour a week jobs that they're at. Um, and, and this is something they do at night once every couple weeks. And, and if that's the way um, they want it handled, then you know we'll respect and honor that. And I'll only call if there's something that's important um, you know, to discuss outside of the meeting context. Uh, others want to talk a lot, and you know, that's fine too. Kind of take the, 
lead of the individual board member in that regard. Um, we also constantly are in contact with your professional staff. So, you know, anything that they're doing um, that, that involves legal issues, um, obviously John or any of his staff people can call us at any time. And we just make clear to all of our clients that we have a completely open door policy, you know, uh, as far as calling us, emailing us, and we'll always be extremely responsive. Thank you. Follow up to that, um, and put you on the spot a little bit, a little detail. Who would you rather talk to? Um, <laughs> well, so, you know, and, 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 it's not a good or bad answer here, yeah. but um, if you're going to be our general counsel, who would you rather be talking to? It really depends on the nature of the issue. If you have something that you're concerned about because maybe you have an issue where you may need to recuse yourself from a vote at the meeting, um, you know, because there's some way that the vote personally impacts you. In that case, I think it's just best to call us directly and to ask us um, beforehand. And, and so, because those kind of questions are very fact intensive, and, and it really doesn't make sense to you know use staff as a go between for something like that. If there's a board issue, though, uh, something that you're working on that um, you know would take the vote of the entire board, um, a lot of times it's best to, for me to just work with the um, executive director and for you guys to take your concerns to them, because most of those issues are usually more policy with legal wrapped into them, as opposed to pure legal issues. Um, but if you have any pure legal issues that you want to discuss, obviously, uh, you know, that may be best to come through me rather than through staff. So it really just depends on the nature of the inquiries, but, um, you know, we work very closely with all of our executive directors and city managers, and, um, you know, they tend to be the ones that that do a lot of the facilitating with the board members um, because you know they're, they're trying to work to get support from the board um, to move projects forward or to make sure that they're communicating with you about the status of projects and so you know a lot of times it works best for me to go through the city manager or the executive director rather than each individual board member but it really just depends on the individual scenario thank you mr Google. What are the successful traits that you have that will make you an asset as general counsel of Fairfield Bank? Um, you know, number one is legal acumen. As Becky had mentioned, I'm board certified in local government law, which basically means that, you know, as board certified attorneys, we've been uh, set apart. We've taken, you know, peer review, um, written exams, uh, written um, correspondence with the, the board's uh, certification process. And you know they've determined that we're the um, you know among the most knowledgeable of our peers uh, to get through that process. And you know Becky's been around since before they even had board certification and has nothing to prove. Um, Wade and I are younger and have both gone through the process and uh, I think proven ourselves through that. Uh, number two is just you know personality and, and communicativeness. You know I, I think there are very few. Uh, staffers or board members that I that I'm not delighted to work with you know because that's uh, you don't get into the job like this unless you want to work with folks like you and so you know we're gonna be um, you know communicating as often as we and you feel necessary and um, again you know not to beat a dead horse here but you can call whenever you want because the clock isn't ticking you know on your bills um, so your residents aren't going to have to pay for every call you make. So, um, you know, I, I think that's one of the unique things that probably makes us stand out um, that, because you can feel free to call whenever. And so, um, I, I think those are probably the main areas that I would say. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, okay. Mr. Morrissey? Uh, yeah. Uh, please tell us about your greatest accomplishments or successes, and how these experiences will assist you as a general counsel. You know, the first thing that popped to mind when you said that is my family. That's probably not where you're getting at, but <laughs> you know, my, my family's probably my greatest success. I, it, it's been a great life, and uh, I've got a great wife and kids, and um, but I, I don't think that's really what you're getting at. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I feel like whenever we can help resolve legal issues that could potentially cost the, uh, the city or the district a lot of money, 
and we can do so in a way that minimizes the cost. It, you know, those are the scenarios where I, I feel like we provide the most worth because, um, you know, ultimately you're responsive to your uh, taxpayers or your assessment payers, if, if you want to say it that way. Um, and, and you have a fiduciary responsibility to them to make sure that their uh, money is spent wisely. And, um, you know, the amount that we can minimize legal fees, minimize settlement costs, um, uh, you know, those are, uh, I, I think, probably the most rewarding because, you know, I, I take the idea very seriously because I am a taxpayer that, um, you know, we don't want to ring up your assessment payers or taxpayers to have to spend money unnecessarily, either on us or on somebody who might be suing you or somebody who we, we might be suing. Um, so, you know, that's always rewarding. And also, you know, just if, if there are areas where we can catch something that could be a legal problem down the road um, and, you know, catch it right off the bat, um, you know, that, that's always great because having to unwind problems after they've already been in motion is, um, you know, often a hassle. And, and so uh, that's part of our model is trying to make sure we keep you all out of trouble. Thank you. Mr. Ramos. Uh, during your career, have you had what you would consider a significant failure while working for an organization? And what did you learn from the failures that would help you as our general counsel? Yeah, I mean, life's full of successes and failures, right? Uh, the fortunate thing is I, I don't think I've had what I would call a significant failure. Um, you know, I, I, I have lost one court case before, I've won all the rest of them, but I, I did lose one. Um, and it was a witness turned on the stand. You know, I, I had a witness I thought who was gonna say one thing, and then when they got on the witness stand, said something completely different. And, you know, that, that was an eye-opener for me because, you know, I always assume, well, they've told me what they told me in private, which is the truth, and, you know, on the stand, you're under oath, so of course you're gonna tell the truth. And um, <laughs> so it was a kind of a learning experience for me to realize, you know what, if, you, if you're relying on one witness for your case, um, you, you better make sure they're going to say what you think they're going to say, because if you don't, uh, that, that can cause you to lose into the case. And that's what happened here. And so, you know, hopefully I've learned from that and um, can offer, you know, multiple witnesses to, you know, if, if possible, um, you know, make sure to get their, um, you know, a deposition beforehand that puts it, their answer in um, print so that if they do turn on the stand, you can throw that back at them and say, well, in the deposition under oath you said this and, you know, impeach them on the stands. And, and so that was a good learning experience for me. And it was frankly a pretty low stakes case. So there was no, no adverse, um, you know, result to the client except that they didn't get a, um, an injunction that they wanted. But, um, uh, just saying, it's not. It wasn't an expensive lesson, which is the good thing. <laughs> so thank you. A couple follow-up things here um, that we had asked some other people. Tell, what, do you, what do you consider litigation? Like, if I asked you what litigation is, what would you say it is? I would say, in general, it's anything that you are working towards ending up in the court system. So your DORs are certainly litigation um, because those are gonna be filed in circuit court and, and resolved all the way through in circuit court. Um, and you can charge anything different for any type of litigation? No, that's all included in our monthly fee. So we don't have an hourly fee for litigation like most other firms do that work in this area. Between the three of you, if you were going into court as a litigator, who would be the lead litigator? It would, After a court case? It would probably be me. I, I've had uh, you know significant litigation experience in Brevard County through Cocoa Beach. Um, I'm in the courthouse probably every couple months or so. Um, so, you know, not every day, but cer I, mean, I certainly know where it is. County courthouse, do you think? Brevard County, Brevard yeah. County. yeah. Okay. Um, because we represent Cocoa Beach, and I do some litigation for them. And so, you know, I know some of the judges. I haven't practiced before all of them, because we have a lot of judges here. But um, it would probably be me. But, you know, the great thing is we've got um, Becky and Wade who have, uh, you know, more litigation experience than I do, frankly, because uh, my time in this, working for the state weren't really litigation jobs by nature. Um, so, 
you know, I've got them to fall back on, and, and Becky's always willing to lend a helping hand if, if I have any questions or if I need somebody to, you know, I'd like her to appear with me. And again, you're not paying for two lawyers. If that happens, you're not paying for either of us because it's included in our fee. And you have a, before I get to my final question, you have, um, you have an office, a local office. Do you actually have an office or you work out of your home or do you? It's a home office, a home yes. Office. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's not like a, a firm storefront office. We have a main office in Winter Park where I have an office and a desk and all that. Um, well, he'll probably tell you because he'd probably like me to be there more. I'm only there a few times a month. Mm -hmm. um, and, and typically it's when I'm on my way to another client and, and I can stop by for a few hours and work out of there. Um, I, I work every day out of my home office in Brevard County. Okay, all right. Um, in closing this, and um, we've gone through most of the questions we have, but as we conclude the interview, I want to thank you, of course, for attending, and I think we keep losing ourselves, um, and, and showing your interest in uh, general counsel position at Veracruz Bay. In closing, do you have any final questions for us? Do you have any comments? Do you have any suggestions or ideas or, or anything you'd like to tell us of why you, again, in closing, why you should be our counsel? Yeah, I'd first like to thank you. It was an honor to be selected in the top three um, when we submitted our proposal. And I hope at the end of this, you'll uh, select us as your general counsel. Um, I, you know, as I said, you'll be working almost entirely with me, but we've got so much experience behind me. Um, you know, with, if we need to go to court or somebody needs to back me up in any way. Um, and, you know, this would be, it would be an honor to represent you. You know, that, that's, that's really what I can say because um, when I when I moved back to my wife's hometown in Brevard County, um, they had already had Cocoa Beach as a client, and I do some work for them. As I said, I do their police um, litigation, and I also represent their board of adjustments. Um, uh, but you know, I'd love to have a client here in the county that's that's nearby, uh, because you know, frankly, there's some sense of ownership of that when there's a a, a group of people that's right in your community that you can represent. Um, so, you know, just want to thank you for giving us the opportunity and, um, you know, we, we hope to hear back from you soon. Thank you. Thank you all three. Thank you. Um, that, any other further questions from the board? We're going to conclude and take a little three or four minute break, okay? Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did they see the previous tapes of the other in, of the interviews? 
uh, because there's no question they absolutely did their homework and, and but they did of course because we didn't put the tapes out. Um, very impressed with what they knew about our district, what uh, they do with special districts. Um, um, almost like they knew, as we said, what we were looking for and some of the questions that we asked. So uh, I was I was very impressed with the homework part of it um, and what they knew about us. Yes, sir. Just jump in, everybody. I will tell you at our last group of interviews. Yeah, if you like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. At the last group of interviews. Following the interview, John Kerry came up and introduced himself to me. Mm -hmm. He sat in the audience. Yeah, yeah. Look, at, at what interviews? At the interview for other clients? Yes. No, no I don't think so. No, no, he was at the board meeting. He was at the board meeting. Yeah. He wasn't at the interviews, no. Yeah, he was at the board meeting. We know that. No. You, heard, you heard Becky raise the point about there was a concern that the 7,500 didn't only work to that, not above that. That was a question I asked. Yeah. My concern. But, but <laughs> it may be they knew, they knew it may be, but my, the, the meeting that he attended was a regular board meeting. It wasn't an interview. Yeah. And, and uh, Jim, I believe he overheard me talking to Cliff. When I, I asked Cliff a question about yeah, yeah, the structure of the selling <coughs> structure payment. Because yeah. he came to me specifically. Yeah, Because yeah. yeah. he was right. over talking to you. He was, and I was over there talking to Cliff. Oh, well, and, and again, it, that, that points to a very good, my, my original point was they absolutely did their homework. Yeah, very they went out of their way to find out what we do, how we do it, what very, they would have to do. Very well prepared. Yeah, well, I, I, I was amazed, actually. When he came over to talk to me, he got talking about um, being away the week of Thanksgiving. And I said, immediately go across and see Stephanie. And he didn't hesitate. He went right over, and um, they were well prepared. Mr. Morrissey, what did you think? Uh, yes, I, uh, compared to the other two uh, interviewers from here, it's a no-brainer to me. He seems to be have a lot of experience in the area that we need him in. He's got the right answers. Uh, I, I really would recommend him. They, and they, they also, uh, we were talking outside there, not with them, but I was talking to John. They also seem very, very eager yeah. to want this. Not that the others don't want it also, but I mean, I, I, I give them, what, what do they, people say they give them props or whatever? Well, I give them props for number one, um, being well, very, very well prepared. And number two, being able to answer questions immediately as soon as we asked them. Just went right into the answer of the questions and that's why I passed John a note and I said, did they see the tape? <laughs> you know, know what we're gonna ask? And which of course they did. But that's impressive. Um, number three, they're very, very eager to do this. Number four, they show up with three attorneys to show their interest that they want it as a firm. I, now, give you a negative part of that. Um, he did attend one, John Kerry attended one of our board meetings and he showed up in just street clothes. I, I, and we knew who he was and I thought, oh, wait a minute, that, that doesn't show professionalism. And so immediately I was put down a little bit. Um, and, and you know, I, when I was a superintendent, they used to joke, I, I, I cut my grass in a three-piece suit. I mean, you know, kind of. So, but again, when they came for the interview, very, very well prepared, very impressed. I, was. I didn't see any problem with him sitting out in the audience and playing clothes. I actually think it was less of a distraction. I think he um, kind of fit in together. Then. Yeah, and I, I think I think he didn't draw any special attention. So I was impressed in the fact that he came up and he introduced <coughs> himself. Immediately went over to Stephanie when I said, "Okay, that's going to be a scheduling." problem. Um, they came well prepared. The one thing that I liked about this firm was the fact that there is backup. And the other thing I got the impression, and, and, and I know Cliff didn't care for this, but I like the fact of the pricing because it strikes me that they're going to work to complete something quickly because it's to their advantage. Sure. And um, of the three, that would be my first choice. Bruce. Mr. Davis. Uh, uh, Bruce is fine with me. Uh, I, I was impressed with these people, this firm. One of the things that I didn't care for on the other firms, the, the first firm, um, 
I wasn't all that and thinking that, that uh, what was his name? But that would he fit in very well with their meetings and stuff, Paul. There's no Paul Google in yeah. And plus, there, that's a firm with 80 lawyers in that firm. And he, he made some statements about, well, he does this and this. And there's other people that do the other things. So I was afraid that we may get lost in that firm with certain things that we put out there. Plus, they were very expensive compared to the other two, and they wanted to renegotiate higher as soon as they could. So I kind of put them on my bottom. But this, uh, these people, I think, were very prepared, like you said. They deal with what we need. They have 30 years of code enforcement. Um, they explain their billing policy, uh, policies. They have a county, county charter in, um, experience for things like that. We have, like you said, they brought three people here to, and they all they all jumped in and explained it. They look you in the eye when they're talking. I know that's important. It is. And, uh, with, with John here, I think he's got a very strong personality and he's well-spoken, but he's not overbearing. And I think that's something that, uh, well, I like, and I think our residents would like that at a meeting instead of somebody that's kind of soft, you're not sure what he's really getting to. I think this guy's gonna tell you what you need to know. If he doesn't know it, he's gonna tell you, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So I was very impressed with this one. One of the things that uh, again, um, I, I agree. Having the three people here, I think, was a plus to them because then you spoke, you talk about looking someone in the face or looking them in the eye when you're speaking. The others were looking at all of you and all of us the whole time, saying, "All right, how are we going over here now?" When the other one's talking, and they were looking for our faces. As I told you before, they were looking to, to try to read the board to see where they were. Yeah. One of the questions we asked about the. Um, I asked them the board, the council was hired, reports to the board of trustees, blah, 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 blah. Um, how will you successfully work with each of these groups? And you know, Mr. Carey answered the question first. And, and you, what you were really looking for was, who do you think you work for? Do you think you work for the administration? Do you think you work for the board of trustees? And he answered his question and this, um, Ms. Va Ms. Voss, looked around and she quickly grabbed the microphone and she said, but make no mistake, we work for the board of trustees. Somehow she knew that was the, not the answer we were looking for, but she knew that was gonna be a good answer yeah, to that the question. Best answer, the best answer. And I was, uh, that's when I handed him the note and said, did they see the tape? Or, yeah. you know, um, because it kind of was, you were trying to, you didn't really care what, her answer, what their answer was to that question, but you wanted, to say who did they really think they work for in the end. We evaluate two people. We evaluate the community manager and we evaluate the attorney. And um, and it's it's kind of like, did they do their homework to find out who they actually work for? Oh, I would take another thought on that. I think their experience in local government showed today. Absolutely. They, they whether or not we were asking special district questions or not, their experience in local government. Their answers brought in special districts without even asking the question. And again, I want to make sure, because this is a public meeting, uh, these other two firms are, are very capable firms. There's no question about that. Um, each one of those, I had some questions about the things, and I thought, well, if we get to the third firm here, and we still, I still have some questions, we may end up going back looking at some of the other four. I do not believe, personally, we have to go and look any further than this, my own opinion. Question, John, anything John want to add? Uh, the only thing I would just mention, am I, okay, is uh, this firm, Mr. Carey specifically, I've spoken to him three times before he uh, got here today. And he wasn't helping me for, for you know, questions and, he was just trying to get a feel for the community, doing his um, due diligence. And I think part of the way that they interacted with y'all today is they had some, they had a greater level of who you are as a board and as individuals, because I would imagine they've watched some of the, the meetings and, um, you know, I have not spoken to any of the other uh, applicants throughout the process. and. Uh, he dropped off the packet, asked to speak to me. He was interested in the community as a whole, where the community's 
come from, where it's headed, issues like that. And uh, clearly, they had no mistakes as far as you know what other the other two applicants, which I, I would consider interview mistakes from you know not doing their research about the community. So I think that this firm would serve us well. Okay, with that, if we're in consensus, I actually need a motion. What I would like is for, if we are in consensus, that we would like to negotiate a contract with um, law, law firm, okay? Um, I need a motion from the board authorizing Mr. Coffey and I to meet with the firm to negotiate parts of the contract, etc. cetera. Uh, we, hope to do, we would hope to do that by, what, the 10th? Well, I'm, I'm glad you, you looked at me. Um, I think part of the motion should include when you want to have a uh, special meeting to ratify the contract because um, in looking at the calendar, um, Monday the 13th, well, I'm look, just looking at my calendar, no wonder it's so full. Let me, let me find this building. Um, I can't. Well, while he's looking it up, what we need is an, a motion and we would look at the dates he has part of that motion and we would negotiate a contract and we would have a special meeting prior to christmas to authorize this and have this person on board by the end of, by january so we need to while he's looking I, I i i think the interviews went very well i i think you get a good feel for who the people are with three different clients there's no question you get a good feel for them based, based on these questions even so Do you need a motion before you go? Now? Wait, wait, he's looking up the schedule. We need to put the schedule in first. I will not be here for the 21st. No, it's going to be before that. We would want to have the 17th and the 4th. We, we, we know we have the 17th reserve. We're just trying to find the time. I, I would include in the motion to um, and you know instruct staff to advertise for a special meeting on the 17th. That gives uh, them. Yeah time to meet with us uh, early next week. I, I would anticipate within a couple days they'll have a draft contract back to us and we can advertise that we don't have to put the draft contract out on the 10th as part of the agenda. So if there's some back and forth, but that gives us plenty of time. And then um, they can start the transition. The January 14th meeting is largely ceremonial, so uh, there won't be a lot of you know, <coughs> nitty gritty things on there. So when we start you know, hitting our strive on January 25th, they'll be well up to speed. So our motion should be to authorize uh, Mr. Coffey and I to negotiate a contract with this firm and to hold. And, hold, and to hold a special meeting on on this December 17th at 9 a.m. to then, uh, um, what would you call it, to uh, appoint the general counsel. Uh, approve, approve the proposed contract. Well, approve the proposed contract for the general counsel. Does, does it make sense? You got, you got that? Motion to authorize us, John and I, to meet to negotiate a contract meet special meeting on December 17th at 9 a.m. to approve that contract. I need that motion. So moved. Mr. Nugent May. Second. Second by Mr. Morrissey. Any other discussion? Now, now the 17th, uh, okay, yeah, that's, that's Christmas party. We have a building aid at night. That's the only thing. Okay. Any other discussion on it? Questions, comments? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, yeah, it's just going to be a short meeting that morning to approve the contract. That's all. Um, any other business? If not, I look for a motion to adjourn. Mr. No. Morrissey, second no. by Mr. Amos. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. It's only going to be a five or ten minute meeting. Yeah, good case. I wear my clothes. can wear anything. You know. What day is that? Friday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, I have to tell them too that I'm going to tell them to put me up late that day, so I'm coming in as short as I